بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Respected حفاظ علماء beloved brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته As we have ended last night with Surah Al-Dhariyat and going into Surah Al-Dhariyat again tonight we're following with Surah Al-Tur, Surah Al-Najm, Surah Al-Qamar, Al-Rahman, Iza Waqa'at Al-Waqi'ah, Surah Al-Hadid. These are the chapters that will be recited tonight, insha'Allah. And as we have reached this particular stage in the month of Ramadan, you know, fasting, we hope and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted from us whatever we have done of good, our intentions that were good, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in what we have asked for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But um, as let us just go through the chapters first, and then we will come back to Allahumma inna ka'afuun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'afu anna. It is very important that uh, we understand when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for afu, what are we asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for? What is the linguistic understanding of afu? What is the positive understanding of afu? How do we relate to that particular word? So, so short. Allahumma inna ka'afoon to hibbul afwa fa'afu anna. But so profound, so powerful, so meaningful for each and every single one of us. But let us take Surat al dhariyat There is this very small verse that actually defines our very purpose on this earth. And that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That I have created the... Jinn and the ins, the human and the jinn, for the purpose of worship. Sometimes the, the word worship is misunderstood. Misunderstood in a sense that we say when we make salah, it's worship. When we are giving zakah, it's worship. The arkan is worship. Everything that you do to satisfy Allah with the niyyah of satisfaction, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is worship. Even the morsel of bread that you put in the mouth of your wife, and that you do it with the intention of satisfying Allah, it is worship. If you go and sleep for a few hours with the intention that you must have the strength to be able to act on the commands of Allah, that is worship. Don't misunderstand me and say, I'm asleep the whole day. No, timing is important. How many hours you sleep, how many hours, and the intention thereof. So everything in your life can become an act of worship. That is the purpose of our existence, the purpose of our creation. To come here and to, to remedy things around us, it is worship. To fight in the cause of justice, to stand up for justice, it's all act of worship. But your niyyah is very, very important. So my dear brothers, and then we move on to... After that is Surah Al-Tur, which is the Surah of the Mountain. And we know we're talking about Tur Sina. And then after that, Surah Al-Najm, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the heavenly journey and showed him. And that is the time of Isra and Mi'raj. It is quite aptly explained to us. And we try and understand what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw on that particular night. After that is Surah Al-Qamar. Iqtarabati al-Sa'ah. The very opening statement of Surah Al-Qamar is that the hour is near. How near, we don't know. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that it is as close as these two fingers of mine. That difference, that is how near Qiyamah is. Time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What about the time we are living in? We are 1400 years. We, we cannot possibly imagine how close Qiyamah is for us. But the, the sooner we realize that there is a Qiyamah that is near, the sooner we will realize our responsibility and we are going to be accountable by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we will be resurrected. That is Surah Al-Qamar. One important, very, very important verse in Surah Al-Qamar and that is to do with the Holy Quran. وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرِ Allah has made the Quran not difficult. My brothers and sisters, we might speak English, Afrikaans, Kosa, but if you try and put your mind to it, Quran is not that difficult to recite. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have made it easy for those who want to remember it. 
Your intention, your desire must be there. Your will must be there. فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرْ Is the one that, can re- that will remember. How many huffals do we have throughout the world today? Come, my dear brothers. They are, they are standing up every single day. We're having huffals coming forward. That I am half of the Quran. Alhamdulillah. How many people can say that the Bible is, is being uh, memorized? The Torah has been memorized. But how many people have memorized the Holy Quran? Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows his protectors of the Qur'an. This is one method. We have sent down this Qur'an and we have sent the protectors of the Qur'an and that is the Hufal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them and protect them as well, inshaAllah. After that we get to the most, one of the most beautiful surahs. I think everybody, they, I don't know, people cry when they listen to Surah Al-Rahman. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it very clear in that surah. فَبِأَيِّ أَلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَثِّبَانِ Kuma, what is that kuma? Allah is talking about the ins and the jinn, human and jinn. Can you deny any of the favors of Allah? Just by the way, statistically, our sahifa, they will tell you it's not easy to memorize Surah Al-Rahman. People might enjoy it. 31 times you have to repeat Surah Al-Rahman and know exactly what comes after. You must know which ayah comes after that. Not very easy, but beautiful to recite. But what do we say when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Of which of the ni'mah can you deny? Both of you, jinn and ins, can you deny? Then our teachers used to teach us when you read there, even in the tafsir of Ibn Kasir, he says, when you come there, pause, say, لا بشيء نعم ربك فلك الحمد. We cannot deny anything. We cannot deny any of the ni'mah. So thanks and praise to you, O Allah. So imagine after every فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان you respond to in that particular way to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And this is the beauty of Rahman. But remember one thing: كل من عليها فان. We all going to go. وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ Only Allah will remain. Everything, everyone will go. And that we must remember always. We're not here forever. We're not here to stay. We're not here eternally. Eternal life is in the Jannah. And Allah gives us the beautiful description of the Jannah in Surah Al-Rahman. Then going to Surah Al-Waqi'ah, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, anybody who reads Surah Al-Waqi'ah in the morning, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala will bless him with an abundance of rizq on that day. So try and read Surah, Surah Al-Waqi'ah every morning if you can, my dear brothers and sisters. Between Surah Al-Rahman and Surah Al-Waqi'ah, if you read them with proper understanding, you will see the beauty of Jannah and you will yearn to go to the Jannah. The Jannah is our place of birth. The Jannah is where we come from. The Jannah is the place that we will inherit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, If you are the heir of the Jannah, imagine. You know, we were fighting our in, over inheritance here of the dunya. Why don't we fight over our inheritance in the akhirah? Our inheritance in the akhirah is the Jannah. May, oh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us to get our full share of our inheritance in the Jannah, insha'Allah. And then after that, we go to Surah Hadid. Surah Hadid, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes very clear. يَعْلَمُوا Know, understand, comprehend. أَنَّمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا لَعِبٌ وَلَهٌ وَزِينَةٌ وَتَفَاخُرٌ بَيْنَكُمْ وَتَكَاثُرٌ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ كَمَثَلِ غَيْثٍ أَعْجِبَ الْكُفَّارَ نَبَاتُهُ ثُمَّ يَهِيجُ فَتَرَاهُ مُصْفَرَّ ثُمَّ يَكُونُ حُطَامًا This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us, this is the dunya. Yes, you are in this dunya. What is this dunya all about? You are so attached to this, but know, understand that dunya is play and amusement. And you will start boasting between one another. What are you going to boast about? And the accumulation of your wealth, and you're going to boast about your wealth, and I'm so rich, and you're going to boast about your children. I have so many children. I, have, I come from this offspring. It is like the rain that came onto the crops of the, the done believer, and he sees these beautiful crops, and the next morning he goes in and he says, It is all gone. All gone. One moment of Qiyamah, the trumpet blows, everything is gone. So, my dear brothers and sisters, that is the beauty of these chapters that we'll be reading tonight, insha'Allah. But let me just go back to Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'afwan. What is the true meaning of afu? Afu is complete pardon. There's a difference between afu and maghfirah. Maghfirah, Allah will forgive you. Allah won't expose you, dunya and akhirah. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will still hold you accountable the day of Qiyamah because it will still be on your record. But Afu is more comprehensive. It is a complete erasing of your sins. Completely. New chapter. New sh it's a new life. You are just born now. You have no sins. It's completely gone. And when I say that, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken all your sins away even to the point where Allah will make you forget what you have done. The angels will forget what you have done and nobody will remember that there ever existed a sin of your nature that you have done. That is afu. It is complete pardon in your life. So imagine, my dear brothers and sisters, tonight is Qadr, the night of determination, the night of power. And Allah has determined your beautiful life for you for the next year. And your beautiful life starts with the afu, the pardon of Allah, and you're starting a new life tomorrow or tonight. Can you imagine? Or you close your eyes after you've just read, Allahumma inna ka afu and tuhibbul afu fa afu anna. And Allah takes you in what state is Allah taking you? My dear brothers and sisters, Allah gives us alf shahr, a thousand months of reward for anything we do. Is it right? That we go to Allah with two rak'ats, four rak'ats. Allah gives us an abundance. Go to Allah with an abundance. Go to Allah with more tasbih. Go to Allah with more qiraat al-Quran. Go to Allah with sitting and crying in front of Allah. Talk to Allah about all your problems. You can talk to man, it might come out. With Allah, it's never going to come out. So my dear brothers and sisters, take this opportunity. Let's love these nights. Make it alive from within and liberate ourselves from here and here. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant us that afu, that pardon, insha'Allah, with the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for all those that are sick, the health and strength, insha'Allah, for those that have passed on high place in Jannah, insha'Allah, and for all those that are suffering, may Allah bring liberation to them, to those that bring ease for those in Palestine, liberate Masjid al-Aqsa, insha'Allah, and one day, just one day, insha'Allah, we will all shoulder to shoulder, Walk in Masjid al-Aqsa and pray in a liberated Masjid al-Aqsa, insha'Allah. Wa akhiru da'wana, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.